Alright, let us get started. So today we're going to be talking about mathematics and its connection to art. And in particular we're going to be talking about one of the connections to art and math from mathematics. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by talking about the rabbit problem. The rabbit problem is a problem from almost a thousand years ago. Um, it was made famous by a mathematician named Leonardo da Pisa, or more commonly called Fibonacci. And it's so popular that it even has a, a children's book named after it. So what is the, the rabbit problem? The rabbit problem is essentially a problem about the reproduction of rabbits. And so it has a premise. The idea is that we start out with one pair of rabbits. And then the question is, how many pairs of rabbits will we have after a certain amount of time? The idea is that, like they say, rabbits multiply quickly, or multiplying like rabbits. And so, as time goes on, rabbits will eventually start reproducing. So what if this one pair of rabbits is unable to reproduce for two months? So it takes two months before they're able to reproduce. And then after they hit fertility, they're able to reproduce monthly. And they do. They reproduce every month after that. So what's the rabbit problem? The rabbit problem is how many pairs of rabbits will we have after a certain amount of time? Right. So when you're trying to solve this problem, what you've got to do then is you have to think through how many pairs of rabbits will be at a certain amount of time. So in this book, and in, in the particular children's book that I'm looking at, this is by um, Emily Gravatt, um, what she does is she pretty much asks it one month, month by month. So she starts out, as I a calendar, and she starts out in January, and then February, and so on and so forth. All right. So we could do the same type of thing. We've got January, February, March, April, May, June. July, August, September, October, November, and December. So in January, we could ask how many pairs of rabbits are there. Well, it says that we start out with one pair. So there's one pair of rabbits. In February, only one month has gone by. So this pair of rabbits that we start out with is not able to reproduce yet. So that we still have just one pair. But things start happening in March. By the time we get to March, this one pair has now been around for two months. And so they reproduce, and one of the things to, to tell you is that when they reproduce, and this is not true about all rabbits, but when they reproduce uh, each month after that, they're going to each time have one pair of rabbits. So let's put that down. Each time, one pair. Alright, so when we get to March, we've got the original pair, but they're now reproducing, so they have another pair. So there are two pairs of rabbits in March. So here's where it gets a little bit funky. So we have the original pair, and we have the new pair. In April, we have the original pair still. They'll still be here. We have the new pair, but the original pair, because they reproduce every month after, the original pair is going to have another pair. So there's going to be like a new new pair. And so all together, there will be three pairs. So the original pair, the pair born in March, and the new pair born in April. What about May? By the time we get to May, we have the original pair, so they're still going over to May. We have the new pair, they're still going over to May. We have the new new pair, which shows up in uh, April, so they're going to go over to May. So there we have three pairs, but we have some new baby rabbits as well. Remember the original pair is going to reproduce, so there's going to be another pair. So they're going to kind of reproduce and bring in another pair from May. And then the new pair that showed up uh, in March is also going to have a pair of baby rabbits. And so they're going to have a pair right there. And so all together we have five. Now you can keep on trying to write down which pairs are which, grandparents and parents and new babies and this, that, and the other thing. You can try to write down an exact list. But what we notice is that there's some type of pattern going on here. And here's where the pattern kind of comes from. If we look at April, there are three pairs of baby rabbits. So now we're going to try to figure out what June is doing. Now this three pairs of baby rabbits, because they were around in April, they will be going two months into the future to get to June. 
And so there would be three new pairs of baby rabbits. So three pairs of babies. What about the adults? How many adult rabbits will there be? Well, there were five in May, and we would expect that those five are still going to be there. So here are the adults. So let's see if you put that down there. And so all together there will be three pairs of baby rabbits, five pairs of adults, and so there will be eight pairs of baby rabbits in June. Now what do we do? We can just add the three and the five. In fact, look at this. One plus one makes two. One plus two makes three. Two plus three makes five. Three plus five makes eight. Five plus eight makes thirteen. And we get this sequence of numbers, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144. The sequence of numbers, and we can keep on going on in the future. Now, I mean, this makes assumptions that the rabbits don't pass away and that we're having exactly one pair, and these assumptions that we started out with. But the sequence of numbers kind of grows out of just reproducing rabbits. This sequence is a famous sequence, it's the answer to the rabbit problem, and we call this the Fibonacci sequence. What's important about the Fibonacci sequence is that we always start out with two ones, and to get to the next term, or the next number in the sequence, we're going to add the previous two terms. Alright, so let's write that down. thing again is that it starts with two ones, and then each term is the sum of the previous two terms, well really each later term after the two ones. So we've got 1, 1, 1 plus 1 makes 2, 1 plus 2 makes 3, 2 plus 3 makes 5, 3 plus 5 makes 8, 5 plus 8 makes 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144. Now that's just the first 12 terms of the Fibonacci sequence. There are, there's an infinite number of terms. It just keeps on going on forever. So now that we get the Fibonacci sequence, we can start to ask ourselves things like, what do we do with the Fibonacci sequence? Can we expect to see it in nature? And the answer is yes. We should expect to see the Fibonacci sequence in nature, just like we saw with the rabbit problem. Right? And if you want to double check, the rabbit problem actually goes through, and it's got a calendar, and it shows you in January that it's got the lonely rabbit, just one pair. And as time goes on, the rabbits reproduce, and we get more and more pairs. And I guess the fun thing, the thing that I like about this book is that by the time you get down to the very end, it is a pop-up book. So there are 144 pairs of rabbits right there. Now that we have the sequence, though, one of the things that I like to do is I like to try to actually take the sequence and look at different things that can kind of come out of it. So the Fibonacci sequence is nice enough, but there are other things you could do with it. Suppose that I started taking squares, and the squares had length and width, the size of the Fibonacci numbers. Now each of these numbers we call a Fibonacci number because they show up in the Fibonacci sequence. Suppose that I started making squares. A 1 by 1 square, a 1 by 1 square, a 2 by 2 square, so this is a 1 by 1, 1 by 1, 2 by 2, a 3 by 3 square, 3 by 3, a 5 by 5 square, 5 by 5, and I'm actually running out of room on this board. Maybe instead of setting them kind of underneath the sequence, maybe I could try to put them together, almost like packing boxes into a truck. And it turns out these, these squares pack together really nicely. So let's try it. Let's do just the 1x1, one one, the 2x2, two two, the 3x3, three three, the 5x5, five five, and see if we can pack them onto this board a little bit more efficiently. So I'll do a 1x1, one one, and then I'll do another 1x1. One 
So this is like the first Fibonacci number, the second Fibonacci number. And then I'll do a 2 by 2. And I'll do a... Wait, let's pause for just a second. If you want to, click pause on the, on the video. And before I move forward, draw what you think... Actually, if you've already clicked pause, now you're just turning back on to figure out what the hell I was talking about. Before you click pause, at, uh, let, let me tell you what you're going to do. Draw a rectangle. Draw what you think a rectangle looks like on your piece of paper. Click pause and do it. Now when you come back, I, what I want to show you is what a rectangle really, what we think of what a rectangle really looks like. Because what's going to end up happening now is I've created the first square, the second square, the third square. The next one will be a 3x3. Three three. Now notice because of the way that this is drawn, the distance from here to this corner is 3. 1 plus 2 makes 3. It's like the Fibonacci sequence. So I can put the 3x3 three three right here. What about the 5x5? Five five? Well, 1, 2, plus 3 makes 5. So I can put the 5x5 five five right here. And as I do this, because of the way the Fibonacci sequence works, I can continue to keep on adding squares as I go around what I've already got. Now I'm going around, so my first square is right here, then I put one down to the bottom, then to the right, then to the top, then to the left. The next one will go to the bottom, and then to the right, and then to the top, and then to the left. And it will go around in a counterclockwise fashion. Now I could have also done the same thing by going clockwise, and it doesn't really matter which way you go. What matters is when you get to the end, or when you get as far as you've gotten so far, you get what looks like a very beautiful rectangle. If I was to go on forever, we would call this rectangle the golden rectangle. The golden rectangle is defined to be the rectangle whose length and width has the nice proportion coming from the Fibonacci sequence. So what is this proportion or what is this ratio? The ratio for the golden rectangle, the one that you get when you get, go off towards infinity of adding rectangles over, or squares over and over again, is called the golden ratio. Ratio is just a fancy word for fraction. So the golden ratio is the ratio of length to width. and the golden rectangle. All right, so the golden rectangle is what you get if you keep on going on forever. Now technically we can actually figure out what the golden rectangle looks like based on looking at the ratio or what happens to the ratios as we go off forever. So this, this rectangle is really nice. It looks like what we kind of think of as a rectangle. And the golden ratio ends up being pretty decent too. So let's see if we can look at the golden ratio. Now before I do that, before I look at the golden ratio, I want to show you one more golden thing. Remember we spiraled out as we created this golden rectangle. What if I started out in the upper right hand corner, kind of like the very starting point of this spiral, and drew a spiral through these squares. And the way that I did it was I started out in this corner of this first square, and I drew an arc to the opposite corner in that first square. Now when I do that, I land in the upper left hand corner of the second square. And so I could keep on drawing arcs by going to the opposite corners of the square. So I'll go to the opposite corner, the lower right hand corner, then the upper right hand corner of the third square, then the upper left hand corner of the fourth square, and then the lower left hand corner of the fifth square, and so on and so forth. This spiral that's created, and if it keeps on going on forever, is called the golden spiral. So to kind of sum up what we talked about so far, the golden rectangle is the rectangle that you get by putting these squares together nicely. The golden spiral is the spiral that you get by creating a spiral inside those squares. And the golden ratio is the ratio between the length and the width of the golden rectangle. The reason why these are all called golden is because they show up in nature. In fact, Google golden rectangle or Google golden spiral. If you Google golden rectangle in architecture, you'll see that that rectangle shows up in all sorts of different places. In fact, I challenge you to do that after this video. If you Google uh, golden spiral in nature, you'll see that it shows up in shells. You'll see that it shows up in galaxy formations, hurricanes, uh, plant life, all over the place. Golden spiral shows up. 
And then the golden ratio is that ratio holding all of this together, and for sure it shows up. In fact, it shows up with honeybees and things like that. If you type in golden ratio in nature, you'll end up finding out that that has that same type of relationship. All right, so let's figure out what the golden ratio actually looks like. Okay, so I'm going to leave the Fibonacci sequence up here, because we will need that. So what is the golden ratio? The golden ratio is the ratio between the length and the width of the golden rectangle. So let's start to build the golden rectangle. If I built the first one, the first rectangle where I just put one square in, this is what it would look like. If I put two squares in, it would look like this. If I put three squares in, it would look like this. And what I'm doing is I'm building up that rectangle that we built a second ago. If I put four squares in, it would look like this. Now the reason why I'm kind of starting these first two squares in a different formation is because what I want to do is I want to get the length going on the bottom and the width going on the, on the top. So I want this to be the length and this to be the width. But I'm doing the same thing, I'm just turning the picture each time. And if you want to double check, just check that you can write this on a piece of paper and turn it. Alright, so what ends up happening is I've got, this is a 1 by 1 rectangle, this is a 2 by 1, this is a 3 by 2, and this is a 5 by 3. So I'm going to take the ratios, 1 over 1 equals 1, 2 over 1 equals 2, 3 over 2 equals 1.5, and 5 over 3 is equal to 1.6, repeating our 1.67 if you want to round it. So what ends up happening is I start to get these different ratios. Now these different ratios are going to get closer and closer to a particular ratio, and that closer and closer ratio that it gets to is going to be the golden ratio. But notice what I end up getting. I get 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 5 over 3, right? And if I keep on going, I'm going to get closer and closer. But these numbers that I'm dividing, notice where they're coming from. 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 5 over 3. So what's the next one? You don't even have to draw the rectangle. It's 8 over 5, which is equal to 1.6. And then 13 over 8, which is equal to, and let me grab a calculator. Thirteen over eight is equal to one point six two five, and then I'm going to do twenty one over thirteen. Twenty one over thirteen is one point six one five, and then I'll do thirty four over twenty one. Is equal to one point six one nine. And then I'll do 55 over 34, which is 1.618. And then I'll do 89 over 55, which is 1.618. And then I'll do 144 over 89, which is 1.618. And what you notice is that this pattern happens where if you're rounding to the nearest thousandth, it's just 1.618, 1.618. 1.618. This golden ratio is 1.618 if we approximate it. So the ratio between the length and the width of the golden rectangle will eventually become 1.618. And that's what we refer to as the golden ratio. So now, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, learn a little bit more about it, start typing in golden ratio, golden rectangle, golden spiral, Fibonacci sequence into Google and see what you end up getting you'll end up seeing a lot of things in nature that actually show up. And that's one of the things that you're going to challenge you to look for in your, in your lab, which is golden ratio, golden rectangle, things of that nature.